Hi everyone, so in the news recently there's been a lot of talk about AI resume screening and how the process works and if anyone's in the job market right now, which a lot of people are, they may be asking questions around how does this AI screening work and what are the risks to applying to a company that has an AI screening process in place? How can I better prepare myself for, for applying? And also on the talent side, if you're making decisions about which potential tools to use uh, in the near future, you may wanna understand a little bit more about how AI resume passing in particular works. So what I wanted to do with this video is just give you a very short walkthrough of a quick mock-up of an AI resume parser that I put together so that you can understand a little bit more about how it works and uh, be a little bit more informed when you go to purchase different technologies. Um, so we'll take a look at the screen here. Um, now, before we dig into the actual um, process of passing a resume, um, it's important to just cover why companies use this. And say, really there's three main uh, reasons that a company would wanna pass a resume. Firstly, if they have a lot of inbound volume, um, they may want to have a very quick way to quickly review the resumes that they're receiving and then figure out out of those resumes, which ones should I move forward to a screen? Uh, we used to get you know, tens of thousands of applications to our campus roles, and it was impossible to actually set up a screening call with all of them or even review everyone uh, that applied given the headcount constraints that we had. And so um, we ne never actually used a resume screening tool, um, but that would be a potential use case for something like this. Uh, the second one is if you believe there's some unconscious bias in the resume review process currently, what an, an AI passing tool may be able to do is remove some of that unconscious bias. So uh, instead of uh, relying overly on the types of schools that someone went to or the companies that they worked for in the past, hopefully if you have a good resume screener that has different types of kind of semantic search capabilities, then you'll be able to actually filter for the types of things that are actually more important for your role, as opposed to over-reliance on the things that we know lead to poor uh, hiring decisions. And then the final uh, aspect is to actually reduce overall costs. Um, this is directly tied to headcount. Um, if your current team is reviewing resumes manually and you need 10 recruiters to review the amount of volume that you're getting, and you could implement an AI resume uh, tool that actually cuts that down by 50%, all of a sudden that's uh, five heads that you would potentially save. Uh, and in the uh, current economy, that is actually something that a lot of uh, finance and talent leaders are really thinking about how to optimize. Um, but it, it definitely comes with some risks. So how does the AI screening process work? So say there are six main steps that a company would use as they're bringing an AI screening tool into their applicant process. Uh, first is to actually pass a resume. So take a resume that either comes through an application, could be a LinkedIn profile, it could be a job application without a resume. But what they wanna do is actually take the data that's uh, contained there and then actually extract all the useful information that they want from that. And I'll show you roughly how that works uh, in a moment. And the next part is to actually match based on the types of things that you think are important for this role. Uh, in this example, we're, we're just gonna do simple keyword matching on the job description and the uh, candidate's resume. And then once you have that keyword match, you can rank and score based on how effectively um, you think that person is gonna perform based on what's on their resume and what you've wrote in your job description. And then to actually filter and show um, what the uh, qualification of the candidate is like compared to um, their peers. And so they were really like the four automated steps that have some configuration. And the final two steps um, are really important for anyone that's implementing any kind of AI tools now, and that is compliance and virus reduction. You have to ensure that if you're using this kind of tool, that you're not actually adding more bias into the process and excluding key groups um, based on age or demographic or any other factor um, that's not directly related to performance in the role. Uh, and then the final part is to actually take feedback and learning from the process and ensure that you're constantly updating the configuration or the models that you're using to uh, make sure that you're actually optimizing the process to get the best people through without eliminating people based on things that um, are not relevant to uh, to the role. So that's really the six step process. I'm gonna cover steps one through four in this video. Final, finally touch on the, some of the risks. Um, if you are using just a keyword based resume parser, 
uh, that could be a huge risk because then you're only looking at keywords that someone has actually written. You'll see a lot of LinkedIn profiles and even resumes are not very well written and so really don't fully explain what that person is able to do in their role. Uh, and if you've not spec the job requirements properly, then you're actually not gonna get many hits on keyword-based matching or maybe get hits for the wrong kind of thing. So there's a huge risk there and there are different ways to overcome that. Next, uh, lack of human decision-making. If um, you're relying solely on your uh, AI tool to select all the candidates that are coming through your process, you're actually not applying that human judgment element. Uh, and so there's a lot of context that you might not necessarily be able to get from the data and that you will actually need to make sure that you're putting into the, the decision-making process. Um, a sign of this could be that you're getting a lot of people through to screening that are just not qualified or not relevant for the role. Um, and so your AI tool is doing a poor job of actually filtering people at the early stages. And so that's something to be aware of. And then the final thing is the potential for bias that we've already discussed ensuring that you're not training the model based on biased data and then getting biased outputs from that model. Uh, there's a ton of uh, legislation uh, coming into place. One uh, more recent one was the local law 144 in New York uh, City, which many states uh, will likely copy, essentially making sure that anyone that uses an AI tool in their selection process should be subject to an audit and will have to um, show how the, how uh, the use of the tool has not biased uh, any particular groups. And we're going to see more and more court cases um, based on this kind of law and legis legislation in the near future. So if you are thinking about a tool, make sure that you're up to speed with the legal requirements. Uh, so that's enough rambling for me. Um, let's jump into the demo and I'll just show you how the resume passing process actually works. So um, we're actually going to start by uploading a resume. Um, to make things easier, I just went onto my LinkedIn profile, click on more and then uh, build a resume um, and what, or save to PDF. And what this does is it downloads uh, my LinkedIn profile in a resume format that they can, they can then use to upload. This is probably what a lot of people do as they're applying to different roles. And we're going to assume that you know this works. This is a, a, a simple app that I mocked up. Um, to show how the process works. It uses a little bit of uh, AI, but it's mostly just keyword-based matching. So we're gonna choose choose a file, and we're gonna choose this profile that I downloaded, and then we'll click on Upload Resume. And what this is then doing is taking that resume and then passing out all the different elements of it. Um, so here's the past resume uh, based on um, what uh, is contained in that profile document. So it shows you the skills that I've had uh, I have listed, and these are the things that the machine learning model is going to want to use to compare when we're doing uh, keyword-based matching, and then total years of experience as well, so 20 years, six months. Now, I happen to know the way that I built this tool. Um, it's actually easier if I just give this um, the number 20, so 20 years of total experience. Um, and what you can see already is that uh, the skills that the the um, AI tool has passed, and this is using something called natural language processing. And what I'm actually doing is hitting the OpenAI API to actually create a uh, skills list from, from here using just a very simple script. Um, but you can see these are all the skills that um, that that, that process uh, believes that I have. And totally as experience, it believes that I have 20. Um, I actually graduated in 2007. And so I'd actually say that's probably closer to 16. So I'm actually gonna uh, update this to 17, 2024 is you know, 17 years of experience. And then the job description, um, this is based on um, just kind of a, a generic job description, but I could paste anything into here. Um, and it would, it would allow me to do keyword-based matching off of that. Um, so what we're going to do here, so we, we see how my resume has been passed out. This is all that um, I'm, I'm trying to extract from the resume. Note that I don't want to have school, I don't want to have company names, I don't want to have location, I don't want to have gender. Um, best practice is to only focus on the skills that are needed uh, and just really try and avoid anything that's going to add additional bias into the process. So let's do that keyword-based matching now. So I'm going to click Submit. This is doing the same thing. It's taking that job description and it's matching it against the skills that we've looked at in that past resume. Uh, so here's the results. So um, the total score, so the way that the process works is it will score the resume and it will score like that against the job description and then it will rank you based on how well you've scored against your peers. And so in this process, what, what, what I've done is just created a, a simple matching um, scoring system where what it's doing is looking at the amount of skills that I have and the total years of experience 
and then comparing that to the uh, skills and experience that are required in the job description. So um, I happen to know that the uh, years of experience um, when it's passed out is, I think, three years for that job description. So um, my score and my experience have exceeded the threshold score. And uh, now this threshold score is generally something that you as a, a talent acquisition leader would probably want to set on your end. And what you can do is set this threshold. So um, the threshold actually sets the point at which people pass or fail um, the resume screening process. And it could be based on a number of things. This is based on years of experience and a number of skills matched. Um, we can actually make that a lot more complex and many of the tools in the market will allow you to do that in a kind of a more advanced way. Um, I'll show you here the skills that have actually matched against what were required in that job description. So here, analytics, computer science, software development. Um, so these are things that um, were in my resume and were also in the job description. So it's saying, hey, you have this, this kind of overlap. Um, and so based on the experience and the, the skills match, uh, we're, we're going to qualify this this candidate, and here you can see my qualification is is qualified, uh, and that's congratulations on my resume. In the case that I have a strong alignment for that role, um, and so this is how the process would work, and all that the recruiter would see generally, um, if they're not getting into the weeds with this, is um, the qualification status, so yes or no, um, maybe some of the skills that are matched, if that's going to help um, with the screening calls. But if you rely exclusively on your AI passing tool, um, really all you want is, is this person qualified to move ahead to an interview um, or a hiring screen? Um, and if so, you can actually start moving through the process. So, so it's uh, obviously got some limitations um, and a lot of uh, tools are trying to overcome those limitations with increased um, natural language processing and machine learning models. Um, but in essence, this is um, how the process works very simply. So I hope that was helpful. Would be very happy to answer any more questions. Um, I'm going to have a much more advanced version of this in our live product that should be uh, released in the next uh, couple of months. And so if you actually want to see how your resume compares against different job descriptions, you could do that. If you're a recruiter or a hiring manager, you could actually review potential candidates coming through. Um, Again, we're going to make sure it's focused exclusively on skills, uh, knowledge and experience, not on uh, the types of schools that people went to, the uh, network that people are, uh, are a part of, uh, all the companies that people have worked for, and definitely not gender, age or anything else that uh, we know that generally uh, leads to bias and poor decision making in the hiring process. Uh, so I hope that was helpful. Let me know what questions you have. And if you want to see other videos, check them out right here. If you want to subscribe and see uh, when I release any new content, um, I'm going to add the link to, the, to that just here. Uh, so I'm really excited to uh, continue digging into this. Thanks very much.